See what I mean? Are we going, Dom? Yes. <laughs> right. Hello, everyone. So we're just going to just going to do an introduction to Wendy and Preston. So anybody who's been watching us on Facebook Live over the last few months, in fact, since we very first started Facebook Live, Wendy has been a follower since day one, I think, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, you did because we were talking about that today yes. and watched the very first episode. So the reason I say a name out, Wendy Ann Preston, is that she used to be Wendy Lowther and got married a couple of months ago and changed her name and got it all copped up on Facebook and was now now Preston and Wendy. <laughs> something like that but we've resolved that tonight <laughs> so Wendy it's no good we've got to get this right so anyhow I invited Wendy to the uh, sugar and crumbs kitchen and uh, she was a bag of nerves at first because being invited into the kitchen makes everyone nervous it makes me nervous every week as well but I asked Wendy to come along and make something with our sugars and cocoa powders so tonight Wendy is actually going to bake a cake for you live and show you how to use our cocoa powders in a cake mix and then she's already pre-baked a cake this afternoon here in the kitchen and she's actually going to decorate it. It's going to be a gravity cake. And it's going to be a gravity cake using Maltesers and Aero balls. <laughs> <laughs> bubbles. Okay, bubbles. Is that what it's called? Um, um, balls. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's on the balls. <laughs> So, um, so that's what she's going to make today. And then just, to, just so that when Wendy's busy with things, I'm actually going to make a dome cake. So if John just pops over here, okay. You've seen these dome cakes before. They're well and truly well-traveled, okay. So we've got a blue dome cake, which has five nozzles in the set. And we've got a pink dome cake, which has six nozzles. The only difference here, they are different nozzles in each set, but the reason this has got six, it's got this little drop flower nozzle in and the blue one hasn't. So I'm actually going to make this today because a lady has asked me to uh, ask me if I would make it. And for the life of me, I can't remember a name, but I will shout out a name in a minute when I go and look at my phone. But I'm going to make this one and I'm going to make it in lilac. So a darker purple and a lilac colour. So I hope that you all enjoy watching me make that. And then just to recap, OK, I told you last week that the Great British Bake Off is going to be here. So... I knew before you guys, but it's going to be on Tuesday. So Tuesday the 29th, is that John? Yeah. I think it's Tuesday the 29th, anyhow. Or next Tuesday. Tuesday. Next Tuesday, anyhow. Or is that the 30th? can't remember. Anyhow, so we've decided to keep the sale on until the end of August. So all of you who are doing the Great British Bake Off, the sale is still on. So remember these bags are down from, these are the five kilo bags. These are down from 27.95 to 22 pound. These are two and a half kilos are down from 14.95 to 11 pound. You've got your icing sugars. Remember there's 36 bags of icing sugars, uh, 36 bags, there's 36 flavors of icing sugars. So you've got your blueberries, you've got your pink lemonade, you've got, what we've got, I can't think of them all now, but anyhow, there's loads of them. There's your bubble gum, there's peach bellini, your pina colada. You can buy them in bundles, you can buy them separately from 3.49 down to 2.49, or we've got set bundles on the website that make it even cheaper, which means you get five bags for £12, but they do come in the set. The 100 roll piping bags are back in stock, okay, they're 99 for 100, and our yep, phone flower pouch, 9.99, what did I say? 99. Oh, did I? Well, if anyone wants to pay £99, I'll be more than happy. So, <laughs> and then we've got our cornflower um, pouches in stock. These are 100 gram uh, cornflower pouches. Look at these, they're lovely and big. Okay, these are made in the Sugar and Crumbs um, warehouse. Um, and we put our new fancy labels on. So I hope you like those. And they're £2.75, so they're fabulous. So I'm going to get John tonight. John has promised that he is going to do some shout outs because we never know who's here and you know what it's like. I can't see anything because I'm this side of the camera. John's the other side of the camera and he's promised me faithfully that he will do some shout outs tonight. And Maria's laughing because John's saying no. <laughs> so come on, John, start shouting out. Who's joined us tonight? Who we know? We have Lindsay McIver. Hello, Lindsay. Uh, Anne Viana, Amy Denny, Anne Clifford, Jay Marriott, Karen Naylor. John, say it a bit slower so we can so hi to them. Jacqueline Heaton. Hello, Jackie. Hi, Jay. That's my little boy. Who's that? My little boy. Jay. <laughs> Kim, hi, Kim Jay. Snowden. Who's that? Kim Snowden. Gemma Hobson. Gemma Hobson. Yeah, I know all those. Martin Dursley. Oh, hello, Martins. 
Jackie Beasley, Jackie Beasley, Patricia Thompson, Hello Patricia, Angie Croft Deacon, <laughs> Sherry Hoare, Deborah Jones, Joanna Milligan Birkin. So he's getting cocky now, he's shouting them all out fast. <laughs> well anyhow, we're really glad that you could join us tonight. We know it's August and it's the holiday period, but I hope you're all sat down with a nice cup of tea and you're going to enjoy tonight's um, session. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with Wendy. Okay, I'm going to let Wendy show you how to do a cake. If you can hear some crackling in the background, it's just because I'm getting my nozzles ready. Okay, and then any questions you want to ask, just remember, shout out, ask John, and John will ask Wendy, she's prepared for it. And then if, if, we, if John misses it, you're, you're all a team, you're here every single Monday, you all work together. So if you can all help each other answering each of the, each of the questions, that would certainly help. So Wendy, it's over to you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hi, um, we have the oven set at 160 degrees, fan oven, uh, and the shelf in the middle of the oven as well and I've got all of my ingredients weighed out here and this is just a basic Victoria sponge but a chocolate one using the sugar and crumbs cocoa powders so we have 225 grams of butter 225 grams of sugar caster sugar 175 grams of self-raising flour and that has two teaspoons of baking powder in as well and we have 50 grams of the chocolate lime cocoa powder, four large eggs, and that's your basic recipe. And this is a great one because it's an all-in-one recipe, so there's no need to have different uh, mixes going, or to add different bits at different times. Um, make sure that your butter is actually at room temperature because it is an all-in-one so you need to make sure that it mixes quite quickly and the trick to a good Victoria sponge is not to overbeat so you just really mix it until it's all combined and don't be tempted to put your mixer on high keep it on a medium speed and I'm just sieving the cocoa powder and uh, flour in there because it just incorporates a little bit more air because you really do want your Victoria sponge to be light and fluffy. In go the eggs and the sugar. And I'll pop it in the mixer and hope that you don't get a sugar cloud. We'll just start it off quite slowly. And then just gradually turn it up. But like I say, it doesn't need to be very high because then you end up overbeating and you end up with a more dense sponge. That's quite dark when it first falls in, and you'll know when it's ready because it'll go a, a light colour. If you like it fluffy, and once it gets to that point, if you can't see any particles of butter left unfolded, then it, it's ready to go into the tin. Can you just recap on the ingredients that are in there? The ingredients are uh, 225 of butter, 225 of caster sugar. Four large eggs, two teaspoons of baking powder, 175 grams of salt raisin flour, and 50 grams of whichever flavour cocoa powder you want to use. I've done this with the mint, it went really well with the more fluids. Today I'm actually using chocolate lime just for a change. You can see now that that's actually lightened quite a bit in colour, so I'm just going to switch the mixer. And I'm just going to scrape down, she says, when I've lost my spatula. Sorry, John. Okay. Just make sure that you get it all from the bottom and the sides. Just give it just another quick whiz. I'm just going to set behind you now.
and your mix for a Victoria sponge should be a soft dropping consistency. And those of you who did form ethics school will know what that means. Basically, if you pop in some on a spoon and just give it a quick shake, it should just fall off the spoon in a few seconds like that. Okay? So that's your mix done. It's lightened in colour, it's fluffy, and it's ready to go into the tins. And the tins I have actually already put some grease in. Just butter I've used today. You can use the um, paper release sprays if you prefer. I used to do it the old fashioned way where it was butter and flour. But this time I've actually greased my tins and lined them just with some baking parchment. Now if you want to be really accurate, you can put the cake tins onto a set of scales to make sure that you're putting the same amount in each. But because this is going to be totally covered in chocolate, I'm not as worried about it being the same on both sides. And after you've made as many as, as I have, you sort of get an eye for how much should be in each tin anyway. And just put it off in the tin. Well, we've got Diana from Idaho, USA has joined us. Oh, fantastic. So has Diana not got the eclipse going over near where she is? Or has it already happened? I'm not sure. Because the eclipse is going over part of America today, isn't it? Yes, the west coast. Pardon? To the west. Is it the west? Where's I go? Midwest. <laughs> Janet, Janet Comerford is going. Go, Wendy, you're doing great. <laughs> Hi, Janet. <laughs> We've got Michelle from the Isle of Wight. What size are the tins? Oh, I was just about to say, actually, these are eight, they are eight, eight inch tins, yeah. which is great for the 225 um, ratio. If you're going to use the 175, I would suggest using um, the seven inch tins instead of the eight. So that's them all ready and they're just going to pop into the oven for between 25 and 28 minutes we've got our first viewer from samoa in the pacific oh, in really? the south pacific oh fantastic yeah wonder what time of the day it is over there then from the south pacific is it night time early hours of the morning i don't know <laughs> so what's her name 20 to 9. Athua. Right. right, perfect. Alright then, so while Wendy just has a tidy up, I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do with nifty nozzles. So we're going to use five nozzles, okay, and one of the nozzles we're going to use is the posy, and I've two-toned this in the dark violet colour and white in the centre. You've seen me do it many times it's, before. It's 8am in Samoa. Oh, 8am. Hello, good morning. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> we get people all over the world, but it's an early start for you guys. So we're going to use the posy nozzle, which is one of our extra large nozzles, and I'm using the violet colour splash tonight, ladies. So I'm actually doing the blue, I'm using the uh, nozzles that's in the blue dome kit, but I'm actually going to do it in violet, okay? So, um, so this is violet and white, and it's really very, very simple. So if John wants to just come in, and Maria, whenever you put the nozzles onto the cake, so this is a stereo foam cake, okay? Um, the re I wasn't actually going to do anything tonight, I was going to give the whole space to Wendy, but then there's bits of that Wendy has to sort of do tidying up and clean down, so I thought, you know what, I'll fill in a few gaps. So I'm just going to start by how you put the nozzles on. So I've coated the cake in buttercream, and all we're going to do is sit the nozzle onto the cake, and we're going to squeeze, form a base, up, stop, and pull off. And that's your first nozzle. So we're going to squeeze, form a base, up, up. Now this is what you girls like. This is what happens when we pop a bag. So there you go. Can you see that I've just popped a bag there? 
okay and that's because I did cut this bag a little bit too short so I'll tell you how to save it so your bags when you're cutting your bags they really do need to be in line this one's not quite there yet but it will be when I start squeezing your bags do need to be in line with your tip so not to worry about this okay so don't panic don't go into a meltdown all we're going to do now is I don't know if y'all can see there or not so all we're going to do now is we're going to get this nozzle and bag so you don't have to re-bag at all. We're just going to pop it in there. I'm going to cut the bag and squeeze it back a bit. Got a real international crowd tonight. Have okay. Yeah. So there we go. So Dor Mark Doreen and Donegal and Julianne and Doha. Oh, hello Doreen. From Donegal to Doha. Yeah. So I've just put, dropped my bag in there. So the lady that I was saying that I was just doing this for, who asked me would I do this dome cake, is called Kathleen Gagel. Now she's just messaged me and said she might miss us and have to join us later because they're going into, they've got the total eclipse going on and it will be for three total minutes, which is between 1 and 2 p.m. Central Daylight Time it's in up. America. So it's either over and she's joining us or she'll come back to us and watch it later. So this, this stone cake is for Kathleen. So as you can see, we muck that one up. So let's just take that off. Okay, I'll just pop that on the side there. And I'm going to go back. And with these nozzles, all you're going to do is go straight onto the cake, squeeze. Yes, Kathleen is there. Is she here? Yep. Hope it was good for her. And this one is the posy. So when you're doing the dome cake, I like to do them in bunches of twos and threes, okay? So we're just going to go round the dome cake, like that. And you'll see that I sit the nozzle straight onto the cake. Now the worst thing that you can do is try and do everything evenly, okay? It just doesn't look right. You need to be doing them random. So don't think about where you're putting them. And... I'll just put one there. Yeah, so I'll just come back with another one and then I'm going to send you over to Wendy again. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use the sunflower cup. So the sunflower cup. And I'm just going to tuck it in. So when you've got your piping bag, you get this little frill, okay? Try and turn the frill away from your next flower and cut straight in. So let me just show John here. And then I'm just going to quickly show Maria there. So there you go, Maria. Yeah, did you get that? And we'll put one there. And I'll do one for John here. So I'll put one there. And this nozzle is the Sun Dancer Cup. And this is one of the extra large nozzles. And basically, all you're going to do is keep building up your layers of nozzles yeah so let me just and then i'm going to use the carnation and it's exactly the same again so who's liking this cake are they liking it john yeah so the carnation here is and all i'm doing is just various shades of lilacs purples to go over the side. yeah it's all right i'm around here for you yeah so all we're going to do is there and then just try and keep them as close as you can so straight onto the base, straight onto the base, let me just see, let's put one in there, let's put one in there, straight onto the base and squeeze off. Now I'll just get this nozzle now and I'm going to use the pinwheel and I've put the white on the outside and the lilac in the middle. So the pinwheel and it'll start squirting through the pinwheel. If you see my face, it's actually on fire, it's boiling in here. So let's just go through again. So if I just do that to the angle, let me just turn that around a minute. If I just do that to the angle so John can see it, and then I'll come around from here. Can you see it there? Yeah. There? So you sit the nozzle on and you squeeze out, and that's the pinwheel. So just so I can do it from here. So on, squeeze out. Let me just go back to this big bag here. 
So again with the big nozzles. Okay, so there you can see Maria. Can you get that in, John? Yeah. Again. I'll give you your slot back in a minute. So what I'm going to do is now, you've seen how I've done that, I'm just going to fill in a little bit more while Wendy starts off with her cake again, yeah? Okay. So you're on to the next bit, Wendy. Okay. So I'm just going to, while Wendy's finishing off, I'm just going to put a bit more on here and then we'll come back and show you how the leaves. So I don't know how long that took me, let's see, we've been live now 25 minutes. I think we did five or, five or six minutes chatting, then I'll introduce you to Wendy, and I think I've just done a couple of minutes on there, yeah? So I'll come back and finish that in a minute, and if you want to go back to Wendy, that'd be great, and I'll go and dry my face. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm on fire. fire to stay on. Do you want me to do it for you? It's on. Yeah. It's on. Wireless connection. Uh, this cookie uh, cream that I'm using is the Sugar and Crumbs Chocolate Milkshake. Uh, it's a favourite with the kids, and I quite like this one as well because I'm a bit of a chocoholic. Just put in lots of different flavours. So what's actually in the bowl? This is, this is um, the Sugar and Crumbs uh, Chocolate Milkshake Icy Sugar. And when I made it, I did 500 grams of butter and a few of icing sugar. And I'm just softening it up a bit because it's just been sat for a little while so I'm just going to soften it up slightly. So that looks a little bit softer to use. It is really warm in this kitchen as well. Oh. <laughs> It's nice and how hot it gets in here, isn't it? It smells gorgeous. Yeah, I know, but well, that's a good thing. The kitchen smells gorgeous, mm -hmm. doesn't it? It's hard because every time I think I have a favourite flavour, you bring something else out. <laughs> well, um, I must admit, the, um, the pina colada is one of my favourites at the moment. I do like that one. Can you just run through the actual uh, the recipe for the buttercream again, please? Um, it was 500 grams of butter, any supermarket block butter will do, um, and a kilo of icing sugar. Um, and I usually leave my butter, if it's not too warm, I leave my butter for between seven and 10 minutes, depending on how warm it is in the kitchen. Um, add the icing sugar, beat it slowly, and then sort of walk away for a few minutes and just leave it beating away to itself, and it goes nice and light and fluffy. Okay, so I'm just going to use some strawberry jam today, but again it's, it's personal taste, it's whatever you fancy using. I'm just going to put a bit of jam onto the, and you'll notice that I've actually left the um, board showing more one side than the other and there is actually a reason for that which you'll see when I start to put the chocolate fingers on. Um, because we're going to actually have the cascade coming down and onto the board. Now I would normally warm this up for a few seconds in the microwave, but to be honest, it's uh, so warm in here anyway, it's, it's spreading quite well without, so. <laughs> um, you spend all your time here trying to harden things up yeah. in this kitchen. <laughs> yeah, it is warm. Love I thought my asking, was warm. What are, what's the name of the novels and where can you get them? Right. So, uh, are these all new viewers, yeah? I think so, yeah. Okay, right. Just one second. Rob, Alan was very kind of for the... Let's put a link in. on. Yeah. Um, if Rob could put a link to the blue dome cake nozzles, even though I'm using the colour violet, that would be great. So the nozzles that I'm using are the genuine Russian piping tips, okay? These are not the infringing copies that are sold by China and that tend to be on Amazon. Um, anybody who knows anything about Nifty Nozzles knows that it's Alexandra and I who own the patents for all the nozzles and uh, they're called Nifty Nozzles 
if anybody wants them abroad all they've got to do is email me and I can sort out a list of nozzles for them and a price okay for delivery um, if it's not a nifty nozzle um, it's actually a Chinese copy so let me just see what else I've got on here tonight so you put jam on one side and the butter cream on the other, on the other. Yeah. Now, I've actually done it the right way around because I'm doing it on Facebook, but normally, for <laughs> easiness, I actually put the buttercream on the bottom oh, and dear. the jam on the one that I'm going to lift over, just because it's easier. Oh, why did you do that sticky. tonight? Um, because then we'll have lots of people on Facebook saying, well, that doesn't look right because the jam's on top of the cream. <laughs> It's like the whole the thing right was. It's like the whole thing was scones, isn't it? Do you yes. put jam on first or cream? Or cream. And yeah. I always put jam on first. Yes, I do. Yeah, but then there's other people they want cream on first. We'll have to open up the debate. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the old thing with the um, Jaffa cakes. That argument ra rages on, doesn't it? Is that yeah. why? Well, why well, are Jaffa well, cakes in the biscuit aisle? Well. Are they a cake oh, or are they a biscuit? Thank you very much, Rob. <laughs> Yeah, thanks Rob for putting that link on for me. So the nozzles that I'm using tonight are the nozzles that are in the blue dome cake. So if John just wants to come back here a moment. Yeah, everybody's up for jam first. Jam first. Yeah. See, you did well there, right? Yeah. I knew. <laughs> Right, okay, so um, the nozzles that we're using tonight is the Nifty Nozzles, okay, they're the genuine Russian piping tips. So if there's any new viewers on tonight, um, the original designer is Alexander Lebedev, who is based in Russia, and this is why they're called Russian piping tips. Alexander and I work together, and he does a lot of our designs, and the designs that are in here are actually the designs that Laura did, So we've got, which is my daughter. So we've got the Sun Dancer Cup, we've got the Posey, We've got the carnation, the small, well, the large carnation. We do do an extra one. Uh, we're using the pinwheel as well. So I showed you before that all I've done is is just put these, put these on, and you just sit them straight onto the base, and then you um, pull up one centimeter, and then you're off. Now I'm going to use a bright green. You do need infills, so I'm going to use a bright green for my leaves, and I think I put a little bit too much. Um, Pam is saying it depends where you have your scones and cream. Depends where you have your scones and cream. Cornwall, it's jam first, and Devon, it's the other way around. Ah, uh, we see, I, I'm a Devon girl, you see. My mother was from Devon, so that's where we've been taught. No, you're doing the wrong way around then. What? <laughs> In Devon, that they put cream first? Yeah. No, they don't. We put jam first. I'm from Barnstable. Well, I'm from Stockport, but my family's from Barnstable. Maybe Barnstable's a bit different. Well, yeah, definitely. <laughs> So my, um, I put far too much green in this bag and it's quite stiff for me to squeeze. So I'm actually going to set myself up with another bag, if I'm really honest. And uh, I'm going to half of it in. So I'm just going to a couple of minutes. This always looks a mess when you start it as well. doesn't have to be perfect because it all gets decorated. Well that's a good thing when you do these type of cakes, it's why I like doing the dome cake because mm. your buttercream doesn't have to be nice and neat. It's the yeah. whole reason why I like using the nozzles because it doesn't have to be nice and neat. It's so I know Kathleen, Kathleen asked me what's my buttercream recipe. Now in America they use the uh, Swiss buttercream method, okay, which I think is known as S S B C, is it? Swiss buttercream recipe, say it. But uh, anyhow, but we use just a basic buttercream recipe. And our recipe that we're using tonight for this stone cake, you need 500 grams of butter. You can either use 500 grams of unsalted butter or you can use 250 grams of unsalted butter and 250 grams of salted. Now when you use salted butter in your buttercream, basically you're taking away the sweetness from the icing sugar. I don't like all salted, I think that's just a bit too much. 
Personally, I prefer unsalted all the way. But um, but for those people who don't want ice, you know, their buttercream too sweet, then do half and half. 250 grams of salted butter, 250 grams of unsalted, and then you need a kilo of icing sugar. Um, if you're using our flavoured icing sugars, um, you know, personally I like them full strength, but a lot of people like to use them half strength. So use a bag of the flavoured icing sugar, which is 500 grams, and 500 grams of plain icing sugar. Mix it all together. How do I mix it? So first of all, I put my butter into the mixer. Jackie said you can use stork. Who said I can use stork? Jackie. Jackie, <laughs> we'll have this conversation next week, Jackie. Okay, buttercream is made with butter. So anyhow, so what you do is you put the butter into your mixer and mix the butter, okay? Just keep mixing the butter on its own. Don't add any icing sugar. Give it a really good beat, three, four, five minutes, but just turn the mixer on and let it beat. It's summer now, so when you leave your butter out overnight, it will be nice and soft room temperature, okay? In the winter, we have to sort of work with it a little bit more. So put your butter into the mixer, really beat it well for at least a good five minutes. It will start to turn white, that's when you know it's right. Then add your icing sugar. Now, if you put all your icing sugar in in one go and turn the mixer on, you're gonna have a lovely big white cloud across your kitchen, and I'm sure many of you have done that. I've done it and still do it now, but now I do two things. I either get myself a wet tea towel and put that over the top of the mixer in the bowl, um, or I just pull saint. So what I do is I turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, just while it gradually beats in. And then once it's all beaten in, then I turn it on and then I give it another five minutes of beating. So the icing, the buttercream is getting about 10 minutes. Um, I know Jackie loves to use margarine, and for all you um, vegetarians and vegans out there, um, especially vegans, you'll use um, another product, which I can't think what it's called now, but I know that you do find it can be quite runny, so you do have to add more and more icing sugar. Can you remember what that product's called? Is it pure? I think it's what they call for vegans. Well, they it's more, I think it's yes. pure. Um, but that, you'll have to have more icing sugar because it will be quite runny, okay? But buttercream is made with butter. Now, while we're talking to Jackie there, next week, Jackie, uh, Jackie Heaton and Rob Allen are here live on Facebook Live. And, uh, oh, have we done this with uh, Wendy? Wendy, have you started and we've not told oh, sorry. Yeah. Right, so while, <laughs> okay. I'm, while I'm talking, I'm just going to quickly whiz John round to Wendy because she's speeding ahead with this cake. So, Wendy, sorry, tell him what you're doing. <laughs> right. She was being sneaky and trying not to be on Facebook Live there, guys. I um, <laughs> just started putting the chocolate fingers um, around the cake. And that's why it, it doesn't matter that um, it wasn't very tidy underneath. So you're just going to press these in. I have done this cake all different ways as well. I've done it just with ganache um, until I became a fan of sugar and crumbs. And now I tend to use the buttercreams instead. I have found though that if you use the um, Maltesers on the side, which is what I did last week, as the buttercream hardens, the Maltesers were popping off. So what I did then was I just melted some chocolate in the microwave, which I'm hoping Carol will do for me in a minute for when I yeah, need to. Yeah, when you're ready. Um, and it just gave it a little bit more staying power, putting the chocolate on, just dipping the chocolate balls into the melted chocolate and then putting it against the buttercream. Now this is not one for anybody who's calorie conscious because it is full of chocolate. <laughs> it smells good though. Mm. I've made quite a lot of um, chocolate themed cakes since I sort of started doing this properly. Um, and you always seem to go down well. As do the chocolate brownies. I think anything uh, that's chocolate is good, isn't it? Yeah. I've got a question it. about what colours you've used. For me? For your, on the, for the nozzles. Right, well tonight I've only used one colour. Okay, believe it or not. So when I was talking to you about beating the buttercream, beat it till it's lovely and white. And this is the white colour we've got here. And then I've used this violet colour. I've got buttercream on my fingers. 
I've used this um, violet colour here, which is part of the Colour Splash range. Now, in, per in fairness, the Colour Splash range is gels. Everybody has their own personal preference. This is my personal preference. Do I dislike any of the other gels? No, not really, okay? I think they all work really well, but the reason I love the Colour Splash range is because of this little gizmo here. So that when I squeeze off here, this one's not been used tonight, this one has. So when I squeeze off here, it's just nice and neat, okay? And you can, uh, I have been mucky with this one. But um, you just squeeze off. I can see exactly how much I've put into my buttercream. And then um, and I've, I've obviously squeezed a little bit too much there and put the lid back on. But normally it's all nice and neat. And um, I've got more control of how much colour I'm actually putting in. So I've actually put quite a lot in this one here. So I've made it really dark uh, violet. And then I've done a lighter shade, as you can see here. I've two-toned it as well. So I've two-toned it with light, with the violet on the outside white. This one's with white, with the lighter uh, lilac in the center. And, um, and I'm now just filling in with my leaves. So when you fill in with your leaves, you're just gonna go around, fill in with all your leaves, and it pulls the whole cake together. We've got a question, Wendy. Lydia yeah. said that when she does her cakes, they come out domed. So how come yours are nice and flat? Oh, I've been watching um, turn, her do that today. You need to turn your oven down to 160 and make sure that you're using the right size tins because if you put this mix into a uh, seven inch cake, it hasn't got anywhere to spread out, so it'll spread up instead. And if you put it in a higher oven, it will actually dorm in the top. And it's the same with cupcakes. I always cook my cup, cupcakes at 160 because I don't want the dome on the top. So just turn your oven down slightly. Yeah. And get the right uh, size tin. And make, make, make sure that you've got um, the, the right, right size, size tin, tin so the agreed. amount of mix that you've got in. Yeah. It's basically. quite interesting that you say that because I do the other. I, um, I agree with Wendy. If you want a flat top, then you should do it on a lower heat for the right size tin. But for the cupcakes, where Wendy wants to keep hers flat, I like, them to, be, I like to turn the heat up. So I'll turn them up to 170, 180 because, and I do say this to you, it is wrong to do it because I want that little volcano explosion. And the only reason I want that is, is because it gives me a bit of height so that when you're decorating the nifty nozzles, they're not just going on a flat cupcake. So you've got that little bit of height to help build round, or you don't have to build it all around with a big swirl of buttercream and then start sticking your flowers on. So I like to just slightly turn the heat up on my cupcakes, but only for when I'm decorating with nifty nozzles. If I I'm decorating with sugar paste um, and I want a flat top then I agree with Wendy I'll keep it at 160 so that they cook nice and slow and nice and flat and yeah. if they do dorm as well um, when you take them out of the oven just turn them upside down yeah uh, it squashes them in doesn't it yeah, and it'll <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. I find that, especially with Madeira cakes, because yeah. obviously you don't want them domed, yeah. because you're usually using them for a celebration cake, like a wedding cake or something. So if mine slightly domes, I just turn them the other way to, to cool, and they get a nice flat top on. And I do have a, a Wilton cake leveller as well, um, which to be honest, I don't have to use very often. Um, but when I do, that's a handy tool to have because it's just like a saw in action and you can just take literally the dome off without taking any of the extra cake off with it. So that's, I've left a gap there because we want the balls to sort of come down onto the front. Um, so I'm gonna start now just building it up with the Maltesers. Did you want me to melt your chocolate there? Yes, please. How long is that gonna go the right way for? I usually do it in about 20 second blasts and just keep giving it a stir. Okay. This is a really nice one as well to do with the kids or the grandkids. It's a nice fun cake because baking should be fun. Um, if you're getting stressed out baking, then it's obviously not for you. Although on saying that, I do have some days where things don't work, like when I dropped a birthday cake on the floor the day before and I had 24 hours to make another one. Oh, <laughs> and when I've got a date wrong, and no I thought, <laughs> And I thought, oh yes, those cakes don't need delivery until Saturday, and it was actually Friday. So, yes. I know I've got a wedding this week, and I have to keep telling me it's Friday. I mean, thankfully, it's not an order, it's actually just something I'm doing as a gift. So they get what they're given. Yeah. <laughs> right. 
I think uh, my family love me now because if I have disasters, well, I think they're a disaster because I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Um, so the family just get all these cakes that I think don't look very good. And they'll say, well, what's wrong with the cake? Uh, well, it just doesn't look right. So uh, I'm slowly fattening up all my family so that I can look nice and skinny. <laughs> Now this is the first time I've actually done it with two different um, bags of sweets because I just fancy doing something a little bit different this week. You never sent a sweet then, Wendy. Do you know what? Before I started doing this properly, yeah, I would have had a really sweet, yeah, I had a really sweet tooth, but. I don't know, I think over the last couple of months, I think I've just sickened myself off with cakes. <laughs> but then I've had people who, who think because I don't always eat my own cakes and there's just something wrong with them. There isn't, it's just that I go through fits and starts where sometimes I really want to eat the cakes and other times I've looked at them all day and I just don't want to eat one. Do you want this total amount of? Yes, please. And one thing I found when I first made one of these cakes is Maltesers are not a generic size, which isn't so bad if you just put them on the top, but it becomes very tedious when you're putting them around the outside of the cake because you're always looking for ones that are about the same size so that you don't have any big gaps. That right, Wendy, that's really good. Thank you. So I think. Just now, I'm going to start putting some of the green ones on. Some people are saying they use cake belts or cake strips around yeah. the outside. Yes. You can, yeah. you can also use a wet tea towel, you know. If you um, wet a tea towel and uh, wring it out and then wrap that round your cake tin, that works yeah. equally as well. I find that they're the cake strips are really handy if you're doing sort of a, a Madeira cake that takes a bit longer to cook um, because it makes it cook evenly and you don't get the dome on the top as much if you're using the Wilton baking strips around the outsides of the tins. And we sell them on our website. And someone has asked what are the green sweets? Oh these are just um, air rolls, uh, peppermint bubbles. See how they are called bubbles. Oh yeah, <laughs> not balls. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so all I'm doing now is just finishing this off. I'm using the Wilton 352 leaf, which comes in the blue dome cake set. Okay, and all I'm doing is just going in, filling in a couple of little gaps with the leaves, just pulling it together. So I don't know whether you like this colour. I just thought I'd do something different than the blue, really. So um, what do you think of this colour, guys? I think that's gorgeous. Do you? Mm. See, I like the blue and the pink. I was wondering whether to do a yellow one. And then you just put the leaves all over the place. I think that's enough now for leaves, personally. And we're done. Now you just go around the base, put in a couple of leaves around the base, anywhere you want. Fill it in. So the one good thing about this cake is, I do use a half dome tin cake when I'm making them, as I've told you tonight. This is on a stereo dome cake. You can get those half dome base, uh, those half dome tin cakes from Lakeland or off Amazon. And I think Lakeland have got a sale on them at the moment because I know I picked up four the other week for half price, which was I was really chuffed about. Seems I had to buy four of them. And basically, you're going to make your sponge in the half dome cakes. I will make a mix for a ten ounce mix. Okay, so I make a ten ounce Victoria sponge mix. Cut it in half, it takes about an hour and a half to cook in the pan. Cut it in half, fill it with um, lemon curds, my thing. I prefer to use that than jam. And then rough coat all of it with buttercream. Okay, now it must have just a rough coat. It doesn't have to be nice and neat or perfect. And then you just start putting your nozzles on randomly all the way over. And then just fill in with some green leaves just to finish it off. Can you tell us what nozzles you've used? Yeah, so that, that anybody who's got nozzles already, and uh, they just want the ones that are in this set. 
So I use the Wilton 352 for the leaf, okay? So that's what I've used for the leaf. Then I've used the Carnation nozzle. And the Carnation, if you go on our website, which is um, Sugar and Crumbs, so it's www.sugarandcrumbs, the nozzle I've used there is um, the Carnation Large, okay? And it's the 108 Large Carnation. We also do an extra large, which is the 208. Then I've used the Posy, okay? Yeah, which just green reason. are you using? Pardon? Which green are just, you using? I was just using just the green off the colour splash. So then I use the Posy, and the Posy is 215XL, so that's the Posy. I've also used the Sundancer Cup, and that's the 220XL Sundancer Cup. We've also got a Sundancer as well. And then I've used the wheel, for the, uh, the, not the wheel, so I've used the pinwheel, which is this one, and that's number 40, so that's 40L. Okay, so those are the five nozzles. So if you've got any of those nozzles and you want to buy them individually, that's the five nozzles. Or you can actually buy all these nozzles in one set, and it's called the Blue Dome Nifty Nozzle Set. And Rob has very kindly put the link on, and I'll put it on later as well. Is it already on the website? Yeah, Maria's already... Um, pin tonight session at the top of the page and it's already got the link at the top of the page for the for the blue dome set if you want to buy it as a whole set and you'll get every nozzle in there and then the color splash these are one pound 65 so i'd recommend you buy those in the blue one over there i've only used one color for this so it's white buttercream and various shades of violet for the blue blue one i've just used the blue and for the pink i've just used the pink not the pale pink the dark pink so um anyhow so i'm going to pass you back to lindsay so just let me ask you do you like this cake guys john you're back here with me sorry john wasn't with me i was wondering who lindsay was yeah exactly <laughs> and we've got lindsay, lindsay, lindsay and maria <laughs> Not sorry. <laughs> you know I always get it the wrong way around so anyhow so what do we think of this guys do we like this one how's this one going are we getting any comments? Yes, Sean? yes, they love yeah. it. Well, would love you like it. to Beautiful. shout out? Love Beautiful, it. good. You know I have to wait for John to tell us. So this is the blue dome cake, and I'm now going to put you back to Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> it's because she's been called Preston for the last few months. Confused myself. I've got it on my pin. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm gonna... <laughs> so I'm going to put you back to Wendy, who's actually now going to finish off her cake for you. And I'm going to pop mine okay. round the back. So I've just got some melted chocolate here. You can use any chocolate you like. Um, this is just the uh, chocolate uh, buttons. Um, I've got all the top covered there, and this is where the fun part starts. Now, I have two straws. This is the first time I've done it with two, so you'll have to bear with me. Um, so we're going to have got one that is about here. And just put your straws right in, and I'll put this one a bit further back. So all I'm going to do with this now, because I want the stuff to cascade down the side and it doesn't hold as well, so I'm just literally dipping the um, aero bubbles into the melted chocolate and it just gives it a little bit more of a solid base. You can um, use ganache if you prefer and have your buttercream in the centre. Just put a couple on the board as well. It's looking good, Wendy. Thank you. Had 11,006 views. Brilliant. That's people just viewing it at the moment. Um, there's 288 viewers with us, so the viewers are people who just popped on and had a mm -hmm. look, and we've reached 61,000. So, very so good. That's not bad on an August holiday now. I was going to say, with it being the holidays and right. everybody's busy. So, Christina Lennon is asking, Do you sell the cakes? It depends where you are, Christina. If you're up in the northeast, yes, Wendy <laughs> yes. does sell the cakes. 
Yes. So um, if you're up in the northeast, yes, Wendy sells cakes and she sells them to her local customers. But if you're not up in the northeast, no. Charlie Carey, Sarah, I've got your tips nifty nozzles. That's another conversation. So uh, Lindsay says I've got her on the brain. I have. Let me just see what else is there. So you just pop them all over randomly. Just randomly you, put them on, yeah. yeah. And I'm going to just start building them up around the straw. Did you think of this method just by yourself, or did you see it somewhere? Um, I thought I used to use when I first did it. I used a, a cake pop. Oh stick. right. Yeah. Uh, I did it on there because I didn't have I didn't have one of these um, frames that you can yeah. now buy. Um, and then I, I done one with that, and then I was just on, I think, Pinterest or something. Yeah. And I saw them using a bendy straw. Right. The very first zero gravity cake that I did was actually a Prosecco bottle. Right. Oh, for yeah. I think I saw that. 30th actually. birthday. Yeah. <laughs> and I literally sat for nearly an hour with my finger on the bottle. But how did you get the bottle on? Was it a proper glass bottle? It was a proper glass bottle. It, it was a mini, it wasn't oh, a large right. one. Okay. <laughs> uh, I've since found out you can buy plastic bottles, which yeah. would have been a lot easier. Yeah. Um, but um, I drank the Prosecco first. <laughs> Good girl. Yes. Well, like, the lady was pregnant, so she couldn't have it. So I thought, well, it's not going to waste. Yeah. <laughs> so I drank the Prosecco. Um, and I had to sit for nearly an hour with this um, Prosecco bottle balanced on white chocolate and popcorn. And these don't want to stick. Anne Gallagher has noticed I've not any, uh, any sweets tonight. <laughs> Because <laughs> normally I'm scoffing my way through this session. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's because I've started my diet today, Anne. All bit, all bit. I've had to go to the. I've took I Wendy. Ten, I took Wendy and her husband to the Indian. But I think I've been <laughs> myself in there. I didn't have a lot. This is why you're really tempted to um, lick your fingers. <laughs> Yeah, no, I can see chocolate all over your fingers. That's where you do want to lick yeah, your fingers, isn't it? But yeah. you can't. I can't, no. no. And honestly, I'm a bit OCD with my hands because they're forever in hot water or anti-bath. Yeah. I've got a real thing about my hands being clean. And how long does the chocolate take to set? You know, like now you're sticking it on and they're moving around. Yes. Now, normally, this would have started to set by now, but it is very warm in here, so I might have to just leave this a couple of minutes and pass over to you to chat. While now I'm finished, right? Have you finished? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, and I've got the other cakes out of the oven now as well. Right. So um, and your cakes. Would you want to show how those cakes are out the oven? Are they ready to come out of the baking tin yet? Yeah. Uh, they might be a bit warm yet. Yes, they are. They are flat on the top, which is what I wanted anyway. And they should have a bit of a spring too. When you press them, they should spring straight back. You shouldn't be yeah. able to see your your finger marks in them. So I think I've slightly overcooked these actually. I got so engrossed in that. Um, but yes, usually between twenty five and twenty eight minutes usually yeah. does the trick. They um, smell good. That chocolate lime mm, is gorgeous. It though, is, it's it? lovely. Yeah. Uh, I usually leave them in the tin for maybe five minutes and then I take them out and put them onto a, yeah. a wire rack to cool completely. Yeah. Um, John's just saying we'll do this in ketchup, but we can't, John, because the ganache will go hard. Yeah. So we've got to stay with it. So it any, is starting to set yeah. up. So. so anybody who is watching, so while Wendy's just putting a few more of those on, let's uh, talk about the recipe. So, Wendy, do you want to just remind everybody what recipe you've done tonight? I think I heard you say a Victoria sponge it recipe. It was Victoria all-in-one recipe. An all-in-one. And um, what was that? Was that a 6 ounce, 12 ounce? It was 225 grams. I don't work in oh, ounces. Oh, yeah. No, Look at you, eh? I don't See? work in ounces at all. Right. I, I, if I tried to convert that, I'd have to look on my scale. Right. Because well, I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to convert that then, because I'm old school, so I work in ounces. Yeah. So how many was that? What was that recipe 225 then? 225 grams of butter. So 225, that's the same to grams, grams to ounces. I've probably got baking nana on there saying, oh no, you can use margarine. Yeah. <laughs> Which you can, to be fair, my grand taught me to bake right. with margarine. So, so it's the eight ounce mix, that's yes. what you've actually yeah. used. 
Right, so Wendy has done the eight ounce Victoria sponge mix. So for us, who are still in ounces, um, and for those who are not still in ounces, it was 225 grams. So that's 225 grams of self raising flour, no, was it? Plain? 175. Of oh, because of the cocoa powder, powder and isn't it? Grams of cocoa powder. Right. So um, this is the way I would explain it. So Wendy has actually used the cocoa powder. So when you're making a Victoria sponge, all the ingredients are exactly the same. Yeah. So if you're doing an eight ounce mix, every four ounces is two eggs. So we're going to do an eight ounce mix. So you need four eggs. OK, and then you would use eight ounces of self raising flour. Uh, eight, eight ounces of self-raising flour, eight ounces, I use margarine, you use butter, don't you? Mm -hmm. And eight ounces of caster sugar. You blend your caster sugar and your icing sugar together until it's, um, you're doing an all-in-one, aren't you? Yes. Ah, see? It just shows, isn't it? <laughs> and how it different we are. And icing right. sugar. <laughs> so, so you're doing all, so, so do you put all your eggs in and everything all in yeah. together? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. If it's good enough for Mary Berry, it's good enough for yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. And if it is to, to be, yeah. to be honest, I used to do it, uh, and sometimes I still do, I'll go back the to the I traditional way yeah. where you, you cream the butter and well, sugar I'm definitely first. old school, yeah. aren't I? And oh, that's right. where my grand taught me to be. Yeah. But then I discovered Mary Berry's cookbook and she had an all-in-one and I thought, how easy is that? Um, so forget that then. So she does everything all-in-one now. Just so that you know about the cocoa powder, as if you're doing a chocolate cake, when you're doing an eight ounce chocolate cake, you take out, of, of the flour, you take out two ounces of flour, okay? You take out two ounces of flour and you replace it with two ounces of cocoa powder to bring it back to your eight ounces. And what Wendy's done tonight is 175 grams of flour. Yeah. And how many grams of cocoa powder? 50. 50 grams of cocoa powder. So that's the, the difference in grams and uh, ounces. And then she's done the all-in-one method, whereas I always beat the caster sugar and the butter together. Then I add my eggs slowly. Then I fold in my flour and uh, add flavoring. But you don't need to add flavoring because you've used the sugar and crumbs cocoa powder, which is brilliant. But if you're just doing a plain Victoria sponge, you need to add flavoring. Or you can swap the um, caster sugar for flavoured icing sugar if you want, like the like. And someone's asked if we can post the recipe. So we, will we are going to post the recipe. It's actually, is it actually posted, Maria? No. Yeah, we will post the recipe. I'll post it on tonight with Wendy. But we'll be doing catch up with Wendy. So when we finish and you all pop off and have a cup of tea and come back, come back with a pen and paper and you can write it down. But in the meantime, we'll type it up onto the website as well. So Wendy is building this together. And how are you feeling, Wendy? Because you were a bag of nerves this you know afternoon. What? I'm actually I've just forgotten what we're doing here and I'm just <laughs> engrossed and this is, this is how I get and I'll say to Dave that I'll be home at sort of six o'clock and he'll ring me at half past eight and say, are you nearly finished? And I'll say, oh, about another hour yet. And he'll say, you do know it's half past eight and I've been in my unit for 10 or 12 hours yeah. and just totally lost and track then, of all time. Men don't get it where you get no. all engrossed baking no. cakes, do they? My son actually got it the other day because he came to help me with him being on school holidays and I had him mixing up all the um, buttercreams for me and weighing out ingredients and he and he saw all the washing up and everything that needed to be done and how long it actually took yeah. to do everything and he said now I know why you're always in the unit, why it takes so much yeah. time. Is it best to go from one to another while you're building up? And it then... is, that's what I've been doing, yeah. I've been letting that set, moving across to there yeah. and then yeah. vice versa. Oh, yeah, um, to and concentrate on one, yeah. isn't it? Um, because it's just giving each side time to start to set. And to be honest, because this is quite random, even if you wanted to put sort of some green in, it's, it's entirely up to yourself how you want yeah. to do it. But you can see here now, I've been trying to be too quick there, and that one's actually yeah. gone off. So I'm going to leave that a second to set. So, in for this recipe, how many boxes of Maltesers have you gone through? Right, uh, I'm on to my third box now. <gasps> yes. When I did it all, <laughs> I did one all with the Maltesers, and it took... Um, nearly six bags of Maltesers, six of these size oh Maltesers. Right. Uh, it's, it's a bit more cost effective with the fingers because yeah. it's only one layer. Yeah, so. exactly. And, yeah. They're, they're actually and how many boxes stick. of fingers did you have to use? Uh, I've used, I've only used two and a bit because I've left a gap. Yeah. So you'll probably use about two and a half if yeah. you're going to fill the whole cake. Yeah. Oh. It's amazing how much it does hold though, isn't it? How, yeah. how much it yeah. needs. I mean, I would have just gone to the shop and bought one box of Maltesers, yes. one box of fingers yeah. and thought I'd have done. 
But uh, people need to realise that when they're ordering these types of cakes as well, yeah. just exactly how, how much, much is going on. Into them. Yeah. yeah. You know, and and it's things like, um, you know, I, I did a, um, a very quick business course after I'd finished college last year. I went on a business course with the same lecturer. Um, and it was things that I hadn't thought about, like um, how much electricity are you using? Yeah. Um, how, how much are your paper cases? Yeah, your cake um, drums. Your cake drums. Yeah, your two um, straws. Your straw, yeah, everything. You can't really. buy two straws, you've got to buy a packet, haven't you? Yeah, you, you've got to, <laughs> so, and, and people say, like, can you make me a cake, but you haven't used all the ingredients. Yeah. Well, if I can use those ingredients somewhere else, then happy days. But sometimes yeah. it's things that you can't reuse, yeah. but yeah. you've had to buy a whole pack of something. Yeah. Um, well, I don't, mean, I don't mind uh, having your leftover Maltesers, <laughs> even though I am on a diet. <laughs> Just take a little bit of time, but uh, it does it does look good when it's done. Yeah. But it is it is very warm in here, so yeah. it's not sticking as quickly as I'd like We're it to. We're always on meltdown, isn't it? Well, at least I haven't turned into a puddle on the floor yet, which no. I thought I might. Well, anyway, let's just take John back over here to recap then what we've done. So, John, do you want to just come back over here, then, so I can just show you what we're doing? Okay, so basically I was going to have a night off tonight and then I had a lovely lady called um, Catherine who emailed me today and wanted to know how to do the dome cake. So I actually thought, you know what, I'll quickly just decorate the dome cake for you. I have used a stereo foam cake tonight, so I have cheated, but normally if I do make the dome cake, I just make it with a 10 ounce Victoria sponge mix. Now on the website, we have two dome cake packs, okay? We, we call it the blue dome and the pink dome. The blue dome has five nozzles in and the pink dome has six nozzles. Um, in, the, in the pink dome, you get two Wiltons and four nifty nozzles and in the blue, you get four nifty nozzles and one Wilton leaf nozzle. So rather than just do the same colour, I've actually used this kit that's on the website. So if you go to sugarandcrumbs.co.uk, look for Nifty Nozzles and then the, do the blue dome set. That's what I've actually used tonight, but I've actually used it in the colour lilacs, which I quite like. I wasn't sure which colour I was going to do, but so we've used the lilacs, okay. And in there you get the Sun Dancer Cup, you get the Posy, Pinwheel and the Large Carnation. Uh, sorry, yeah, large carnation, large pinwheel, extra large sun dancer cup, extra large posy, and the 352 Wilton. So that's what we've made tonight. It didn't take long to decorate it. You just randomly put the flowers around and don't put them nice and neat. Don't put one there, 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 and there. Just you know, just put them around in groups of threes and twos and fit them all together and then you just fill in all the little gaps with leaves, okay? What I've done on the pink dome, you get this extra little nozzle in there and you can see this little tiny one here. That's called a flower drop, the Wilton 224. So even if you wanted that one to go with this set, we do sell this on the website, that one. It's a Wilton 224 flower drop and it's £1.50 on the website. So you could buy that and use that on this set as well. And to be fair, anybody who's got nifty nozzles, you don't even have to use all these nozzles. Um, just use your own, you know, and use your own and put them on. Um, just remind you about the sale again. Great British Bake Off is back on next Tuesday. I'm so glad it's not on a Monday because I, I didn't know whether I'd win the fight. Great British Bake Off or Carol at Nifty Nozzles, Sugar and Crumbs. So anyhow, so they're Tuesday. So you've got me Mondays, Great British Bake Off Tuesday. So the, um, the big baking bags of icing sugar are still on offer. £22 for the 5 kilos, £11 for the 2.5 kilos. Okay, there, there's a really good saving on those. The normal bags of icing sugar are £3.49, reduced to £2.49. Um, we've got the piping bags in, in packs of 100, £9.99 for the bags for 100 piping bags. And we've also got our cornflower pouches in. So, just like John's come round. We've also got our cornflower pouches in, which are £2.75, um, and they're 100 gram cornflower pouches. So, they're perfect if you're using your sugar paste and for doing your dustings there. And they're our very own, we make those ourselves. Okay, so let's just have a go back to Wendy then. In fact, let me just tell you what's going on next week, actually. So, next week, 
we've got Jackie Heaton. Jackie Heaton's been here before. She's on the website tonight. She's commenting there. Jackie and I are always having an argument of what buttercream is made with. Buttercream has the name buttercream because it's made with butter, Jackie. So <laughs> it's not margarine cream, it's buttercream. So we make it with butter, okay? So Jackie Heaton's with us next week and she's going to be making a pavlova for us. So I'm looking forward to that. And then she's bringing her fellow friend, Rob Allen, and he's going to be making an egg custard. And I'm really looking forward to that. For those of you who don't know Jackie and Rob, they are on Twitter and they have set up a thing after the Great British Bake Off. Bake Off. They'll tell you more about it, but they do um, a Twitter bake along. And basically as Great British British Bake Off, whatever they bake next week, Rob and Jackie will then ask everybody else to make their version and share it all on Twitter. And it really is good fun. So they sort of have set that up and they've been doing that for over a year now and they work together as a team. Now they've been here before, they're coming back next Monday, Bank Holiday Monday. So make sure you're here to support them, okay? The week after, I can't remember it is, the week after, but I've, who is it? Is it me? Might be me. Again, I'll have to think of something good for that day. I'll have a look at my calendar, but I know we're really busy through September. So um, I'll have a look. So let's come back to Wendy then. Let's see how she's doing. Okay. So I've built it all up there now, and I'm going to now attempt to put the packets on. Now, I've seen this done in lots of different ways. Um, some people actually open the bag quite wide, and they, they fill it with their um, balled up um, cling film. Um, but the, the way that I liked it was just to have a small slit in the bag and I do actually leave just a couple of Maltesers, a couple of the balls in the bag because it just makes it easier when you put it on there, you've got sort of a ball that's going to hold it up slightly. Right, okay. Did, did I explain that no. well? No, no right. Just that again. <laughs> I've left a couple of balls in yeah. because we're going to put chocolate over here Yeah. and then we're going to tip the bag onto the straw. Yeah. And what will happen is the few balls that I've left in here will actually oh, set. set onto oh, the straw. Right. Okay. And that just gives it a little bit more right. sort of stability. Okay, yeah. So could that. you please pass me a, a knife? A knife? So, yeah. Is it a flat knife? Or yeah, it's just knife. so that I can put some um, yeah. chocolate on here. Okay. Well, this is the moment of truth. This is a bit I've been dreading. <laughs> because... Uh, Sometimes it works the first time and other times... You do you have to wait for a little bit for that to go tacky before yeah, you sort I of put your bag do. on? Yeah, Yeah. Oh, and I know that this is one of those cakes that whatever stage you're on, it looks really, really untidy. But then once it's actually finished, yeah. it, it looks really together. nice. And, then, and there's nothing actually wrong with your leftover chocolate if you wanted to drizzle it all over the cake. Yeah. I do actually have uh, one of those... Um, drizzling tools and I have on occasion used my excess ganache or chocolate to just drizzle over or right, right. used it on top of chocolate yeah, brownies so I'd nothing goes to, to waste that. yeah nothing needs go to waste and if you're like me you can never get too much chocolate anyway yeah. so well so it's looking good so that's just gonna go in there okay so everyone's loving it which is good I'm loving all those love hearts team thank you for oh, supporting good. Wendy I'm hoping some of my friends are watching. Yeah, I'm sure um, they are. It is very nerve-wracking though, it is. isn't it, coming along? Yeah. And you know that you're putting yourself in front of everybody yeah. for them yeah. to like, ooh, I don't know whether I like that, do <laughs> like that. She's doing that wrong, she's not doing yeah. that right. Because everybody has their own way of working, yeah. you know. And, and somebody else might come on and say, well, I don't do my Victoria sponges and all in one. And to be honest, until six months ago, I would never have done yeah. it like that. And the other um, thing is, what um, people do need, need to remember, if they are new here, do you want to go around the other side and watch how she's doing that? Yeah. What they do need to remember is we have to do this at speed. Yes. This isn't like when you're in your own home and you can take your time and spend yes. time. We're actually doing that this at speed. That's going in there. So there's just that one ball there that I'm just going to sort of squeeze down. Hold it in place. Hold it in place. Whoa. I've seen this done with um, beer cans. Yeah. Um, can't, well, uh, can't beer cans. Can't. Can't 
Candy striped bags always look lovely with yeah. all the kiddie mix sort of yeah. coming out. Mm -hmm. So I might do one of those next yeah. actually. That's a good idea actually. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. just a stripy bag yeah. and all this sort of gummy bears and everything coming down yeah. the straw. So I cut that hole slightly bigger than I wanted to. But, uh, it should be okay. Just pop it back in so that it uh, sticks to the straw how I want it. Yeah, I think that's what people don't realise. When you're here on Facebook Live, we've only got a certain amount of time. Yeah. We're trying to rush to do everything so everybody can see everything. So uh, if it's not quite perfect, guys, you just got to remember that we are... Working at speed. Working at speed. In a very warm <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> hey, look at that, Wendy. Right. It stayed up straight away. Yes, I'm just yeah. that slightly. Okay. Fantastic. And so that's to Maria. If you want to show it to John. So a big round of applause, everybody. Get those love hearts and likes going. What do we think? Do you all think you could have a go? Yeah. What are they saying, John? Yeah. They're all of thinking they can have a go. Yes. Well See, done. The, the thing I like about that is I would never attempt to do that. And I've got to be honest, I think you've made it look easy enough for us all to have a go. Yeah. I think I think we could all have a go. I know Laura's made them a few times, but I've never watched her make one. So, well done, Wendy. Thank you. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. great. I yeah. think it looks fantastic. So, does anybody want to ask any quick questions then? No? John? <laughs> well, lots of applause, lots of likes, lots of loves, That's thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> so, well done. So, let me just pop round here then. So, if we go back to where we were then, okay. So it's quarter past nine now on this lovely Monday evening and we've actually finished fairly early. Well done, well done. <laughs> well so John's well chuffed, his back's not killing him. So uh, normally we're still going on with ourselves. So what we've achieved tonight is, is that Wendy has achieved this gravity cake, okay? She's done it out speed. I think she's done a marvellous job. She's also baked a cake for you as well, okay? And I've actually decorated a nifty nozzle cake using the blue dome um, cake set as well which is on our website so what Wendy's used here she's used the chocolate lime cocoa powders which is on our website and the chocolate fl chocolate milkshake flavored icing sugar to make a buttercream and the kitchen smells delicious she's using that I've used banana milkshake on mine tonight so it does smell great in here doesn't it bananas so and chocolate yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> So what we're going to say is it's quarter past nine. Wendy and I are going to make ourselves a quick cup of tea, have a clean up. We'll be back for half past nine where we can sit down and have a chat with you. Now, one of the things, it's the first time I noticed it a couple of weeks ago when I had Kerry Griffiths here, I put the camera on because obviously John and Maria, John, Maria goes home, John goes to bed and it was just me and Kerry here and I put the camera the other way and somebody said, why is the spelling back to front? And it's because the camera was on reverse. So it's, I've never known that before. So later, when, when, because we put facing the camera to us, it had love backwards. So when the audience was looking at it, the L was going the other way. Have you not noticed that on the video? Well, quite a lot of the followers noticed it. They said, why is it, why is it facing the wrong way? So when they look at this later, they're going to see the spelling of this going the wrong way when they, when they watch me and Wendy. The Maltesers. Did you not know that? Cranky, I'm looking at you two, so you've just enlightened you with something. So <laughs> John's looking at me with doubt. So we'll be back at half past nine, so you know the catchphrase, go and have a wee and a cup of tea and get back in that settee for half past nine, and we'll be all cleaned up, ready to chat to you then. See you later. Bye.